been using my modern lenses now for, for you know, almost exclusively for quite a while, and uh, I'm loving them. You know, it, it's great to to have this modern glass, particularly. I think I find that I'm using three lenses the most. It's the uh, the Irix 150, the Samyang 80. Is it 85? Yeah, Samyang 85 millimeter, and the, um, the Voigtlander 35 millimeter with the close focusing adapter. Uh, I, I had the Fujinon uh, for a while, and I really do like the bokeh rendering of that one. But um, but I do find that uh, the trouble with that one is that the actual sharpness isn't there. And I think that's what I'm finding with a lot of these uh, vintage lenses, is that the sharpness just isn't there. So, as you can see, the forest is, uh, is very uh, <laughs> beautifully in its summer flourishing. And uh, so for me, this is an opportune time uh, for some of that close-up work. Uh, the vanilla leaf has its um, flowers, if we can call it that, and uh, the licorice fern or the deer fern, I can't remember which one they are, uh, they're, they're more or less fully um, unfurled, but uh, there are some, I saw some earlier, they're down a little closer to the highway where they were still, just the tips of them were uncurling. And, and those ferns in particular are just, are just gorgeous. And I've been wanting to capture that for some time. So that's what I'm looking for today. I kind of wanted to get a little ways away from the, from the highway noise. Uh, and there's also, huh, um, if I go a fair ways into the forest here, there's a place that um, where there's Devil's Club, and uh, when I was here last, the Devil's Club were just just coming out, so I didn't I didn't do much with them at the time, but uh, but now they could be fully extended, and so uh, that could be interesting. I do love the look of, of Devil's Club; they're just just an amazing. Uh, Amazing plant, really, and uh, so I may do uh, I may do landscape for that. Uh, do a wider. Um, I have my 20 millimeter Sony 20 millimeter, which would be perfect for that. Um, so we'll we'll see. Um, I'm also for the last uh, month or so I've been attempting to uh, to do a series, I guess, um, on uh, being a sensitive person and a photographer. My suspicion is, is that a lot of photographers are uh, highly sensitive people and so therefore uh, I think this will be of interest to quite a number of people. Um, you know, I've become aware of my own sensitivity probably in the last uh, five to ten years. Um, more than aware, you know, getting to the place of, of actually starting to accept that about myself. So, um, uh, so when I get up here a little ways further, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up my, my tripod, uh, and talk a little bit more about that. So I'm going to uh, do some scouting now and pick up in a bit. that the creek curves around here. It's just a little creek, goes off there. And all along the side here are these ferns, which I'm gonna have to, have to look them up to see what they are. 
Um, I was thinking licorice ferns, but I don't think they are. They're deer ferns maybe, or I'm not sure. I'll look those up and, uh, and put that in the description. Um, and there's some that are nicely unfurling here as well. So I'm pretty uh, confident that I can get some good pictures. It's dark in here. Uh, it's been raining. The, the sun is coming out intermittently. Uh, and I want to try to get some shots before it gets totally down a downpour. I was hoping to use the Irix because it's got this nice hood on it, but uh, unfortunately the 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 uh, ISO is just is just not there. Um, so I'm, I brought along this is the um, Oreston, uh, the old lens that I used for years. Uh, it has a nice, uh, relatively close focusing. Uh, distance on it so I'm gonna pop it on here um, I've got a 10 millimeter uh, extension tube which I may or may not need I don't recall it's been so long since I've used this lens that I don't really even recall uh, if I need it I don't think I do but you know for some of the uh, the very close things it might be good uh, just have to figure it out here yeah so in fact, this is actually the Doma, the Doma plan. So I may have, I may have the arrest on in, in here, but since I got this on already, and it does require that um, that extra. Oh yeah, yeah. There's some beautiful qualities to this lens, and the bokeh is one of them. So I've got sunlight hitting a patch of ferns over there in the background. Uh, the Domo plan gives a very complicated uh, bokeh, but sometimes it can be really nice. And in this particular case, I'm getting that. So I'm going to, oh yeah, yeah, this is gorgeous. So right about there gives me some of those nice curves in the ferns up close. And I've got that beautiful backlit area there as well. Now what I'm really interested in is some of these uh, some of these ones that are just unfurling. I don't know if you can still see me in the shot here but there's one right here it's just gorgeous so I'll see if I can come in close to that and of course I'm doing that little technique where you move your body not the, not the focus and bang that is really nice. Come in again I'm just, I'm just going by eye on these um, in terms of the focus. Um, if I was in a little less of a rush, I would, wow, these are so cool. Just love these, these little ferns. The fronds when they're un, unfurling are just so cool. It's just finding those uncurling fronds you know they're mostly uncurled by now but uh, there are still some here if I get down low and uh, the trick then is to find a nice one that's uncurling and then to get that background which is what we're looking for yeah that's pretty nice actually so uh, I'm gonna do some some digging in my bag and see if I can find the right one this is, is one of my all-time best performers. It's the uh, 55 millimeter. Uh, it's a 1.8, I think. Um, yeah, 1.8. And um, it just produces these just beautiful, beautiful background uh, blur. And I do have, I still have the... Uh, uh, 10 millimeter um, macro ring on there. Uh, we'll see. Make sure I'm here at 1.8. And the nice thing about this lens is that it is pretty sharp. The trick, the trick is is to get. That's where the, having the tripod sometimes can really be a benefit because you get that uh, stability. Uh, trying to get stable here on my own, just handheld. I'm zooming in so I get that nail that focus as good as possible. 
but my body is still wobbling quite a bit. Uh, some of these are just so gorgeous. And they're all along the creek bed here, so in theory I should be able to find some that are quite nicely unfurled, or starting to unfurl. Uh, the nice thing about being in the creek too is that they're a little better height. You're not down on your belly uh, looking for them. Boy, they're beautiful. Here's a really nice one, still kind of a ball shaped. Let's see if I can get in close one. Here. Oh yeah, and really nice, really nice bokeh there. Yeah, this is why I love these these old lenses, man alive. The quality quality of that bokeh is really impressive. Uh, and these these are just we're looking at just the tips of these uh, ferns right now. So much of it is the is the background. So I recognize I'm moving around a fair bit here, but I'm I'm really trying to find uh, what I'm trying to do is find a fern that is out. Oh, there's one right here, out away from everything else, but with an interesting background. So you're not so it's not too cluttered, but still has that uh, you know interesting bokeh, not just a completely blank bokeh. So this one will be interesting. I'll take a few because I'm. And this might be the situation where I would actually, it's good enough that I might take the tripod and, uh, and set up. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to stop recording, uh, take some, um, take some time before the rain starts again. And uh, I'm going to really find some gems in here uh, I'm going to see what other lens I have. I know I, I'm pretty sure I have the Revinon. So between the Revinon and this one, and uh, I'll try the um, Voigtlander as well. And between those three, I should be able to get some really beautiful shots here. And if I can find the Oreston, I will use it as well. You may have noticed uh, two types of fronds when I was taking photos of the deer ferns. Uh, deer ferns are a really interesting plant. They have these two types of fronds on them, one sterile and one fertile. Uh, the sterile ones are evergreen and are robust. They come out, they're the ones that are kind of, have a wider, I um, can't remember what those are called, the leaflets uh, on them. And uh, then the fertile fronds actually are the ones that stand up. They've got that kind of reddish uh, stem to them and they um, are, they call them deciduous. They, they actually, you know, fruit, they put out um, the spores and then they, and then they die away. So during the winter, the, um, the sterile of fronds remain and they are a uh, food source for deer, hence the name. So I just thought that was an interesting uh, little piece to these plants which are so beautiful. You know, <clears throat> the interesting thing is I haven't used these um, vintage lenses um, seriously for probably about a year since I since I started to buy some of the modern lenses, I guess starting with the Samyang 85 millimeter, and uh, the Voigtlander and the Irix, and then of course the Sony 20 millimeter, and they've been kind of the focus of my attention for the last, yeah, not maybe not a year, but for, for quite a little while. So today, um, this was the surprising favorite. Um, I had meant to bring the Orest on that uh, that was really the one I used the most um, early on and uh, I was watching uh, a review online about it and thought oh yeah I should get that lens out and try it. 
Um, and I guess what I did is I put in the, um, the domo plan instead. So this is the Revunon um, 1.2 uh, aperture. Um, I don't know how many blades it has, but it's a lot. Um, and I started off with the macro and I wasn't getting, I wasn't as satisfied with it. Um, and I was trying to remember what it was I liked about it. And then I remembered that I learned a little trick after using this lens for a while. And that was to, to just point it uh, in a, in a direction and focus for the most appealing bokeh. And then when I had reached the focal length at which the bokeh looked generally nice, then I would move around and find a subject and put it in that focal plane so that the, the bokeh that I liked was there all the time. And then it was just a matter of moving around to find the subject. And uh, I kind of forgotten that, but I remembered it today. And so after I'd been on the tripod doing a bunch of macro shots, I just started using this in that fashion and I walked up the creek here a ways um, and <sighs> what a joy. It, it's a, it's a, a way of looking at the world that you only get through an old lens like this. Um, that 1.2 aperture, it's terribly... Um, I don't know, ghost, ghosting, there's, there's a lot of, at 1.2, there's a lot of, um, it's not flare, I don't know what you call that, where it's just the, the light is blurring around everything. And talk about an aberration, you know, like that's, that's obviously why it's so hard to create um, a lens that has a, a really wide aperture. Um, even today, you know, like I read, I, I read and watch the reviews and, and there's just nothing um, unless you're willing to pay very large amounts of money. But, but here's the point. There's a tremendous joy in looking at the world that way. I just felt, yeah, I just felt happy. Just the beauty. Um, at that point, there was sun. Um, coming through the forest so sun lighting up and you know there was glare on the on the leaves you know uh, because it's rained uh, it didn't matter I just I just loved looking through this lens um, I love looking at the lens you know it's got this um, amazing chunk of glass there in your hand and so that was a pleasure um, and then the, um, the Voidlander, which is the one I have on the camera at the moment, um, a very dependable lens with the, with the close focusing adapter, I can go from, you know, from about there, um, right to infinity. And so I moved from, after switching out from the Revunon, I moved to the Voidlander and then started to take pictures of the forest. And wonderful kind of organic feel to that transition transitioning from a very artsy abstract almost look uh, very imperfect to the Voigtlander with its tremendously accurate optics um, still you know 1.7 so that's a still a, a wide aperture but beautiful and then uh, stopping down to 5.6 thereabout and taking some shots uh, the color rendition through this lens is just fantastic. Um, so very pleased, very pleased with it and pleased with the feel of it. You know, it's a lovely lens to use. And certainly the message that I got is that coming to this incredible forest, this beautiful, beautiful forest where everywhere you look, there's ferns gracefully pointing and hanging and curving and um, and surrounded by right behind the camera is a, a wren um, all these little birds moving through the forest the quietness here I'm, I'm out away from the highway um, no no one uh, in this forest um, 
so fortunate to be able to have that. And then how your body responds. It's so green here. Man, it's green. The greenness is almost indescribable. And green is hard. I find green very hard to render and to capture. Uh, it almost looks too saturated in my camera when I'm when I'm looking at it and when I'm processing it back at home. But um, today um, I had the um, I switched from from the Voigtlander to the 20 millimeter, which is which is the one I'm using to film right now, and it um, is able to have the polarizer. Yeah. So the 20 millimeter, you can put the polarizer on that. I have a polarizer that fits that. And that took the sheen off. And you take the sheen off the leaves and suddenly those greens are even greener, even richer. Um, so then I took a, a quite a number of, of shots with the 20 millimeter. Ah, you know, I, I want to say something important about being sensitive and about um, seeing things and seeing them more deeply. I'm watching this little wren and he's in the moss on a branch and I guess he's picking out um, bugs from it. Very industrious. The light is coming in behind him, lighting up his wings and the movements are gentle and the life is evident there. I, I know a lot of people really enjoy uh, watching wildlife, and I do too. And I don't know how much more a highly sensitive person um, takes from this experience. Certainly, um, there's an opportunity there with, with our, our heightened senses. Um, we and our and our nervous system that actually um, processes a lot more information. Um, I think there is perhaps a richer experience. Of course, I'm speaking from a sample of one, and uh, so very difficult to say. But um, I do know for sure that for me, I absolutely need this. There's not a question in my mind of of it being a, um, you know, just something I can do without. And, uh, you know, I've pondered this question of my own high sensitivity and why photography is so important to me. And I've concluded that it has to do with um, something called optimal levels of stimulation. This is a concept I found in Susan Cain's book, Quiet. After reading that book, I did some digging in the academic literature to see if this idea holds up to scientific rigor. What I can say is that while, you know, humans are too complex to summarize into these categories of introversion and extroversion, still um, we find we fit into one of the categories, at least many of us do. I come to these forests and rest in this sort of green chaos of natural forms and of course the smells of the natural cannabinoids blowing between the trees. and. You know, I can just settle into to looking and observing and then, you know, taking pictures. And as, as I do that, my attention sharpens and the beauty of the place seems to, you know, magnify. It's, it's kind of like waves moving up a beach with the tide rising and rising in a steady expansion. And, you know, yeah, I'm humbled, I'm hushed, I'm calmed. And then in that whatever you call that state, the state of gentle flow, I find myself completely engaged and alert, completely myself. And that's my optimal state. It's where I want to be all the time. And so that's, you know, what I've experienced today with these old lenses. They've helped me focus, <laughs> to see the beauty. Um, you know, somehow in those imperfections of those old lenses, I, I, I see the beauty even more. Um, and I become more receptive and more aware. How about you? Do you experience this? And if so, you know, please leave a comment in uh, the comments below. Uh, tell me about your experience. And please do click the like button if, if you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.